fireworks have become a can't-miss American tradition to honor Independence Day. But what goes into making these amazing spectacles in the sky? That's what we'll find out in this episode of Behind the Technology Pyrotechnics. It's early morning at Eisenhower Park in East Meadow, New York, and work is already underway for a huge fireworks event in the evening. Audio check, one, two, one, one. So what you're going to see tonight... At the Donna Grucci Butler knows full well that events of this magnitude don't just happen overnight. Months of planning to put an event of this size together, especially a world-class event. People have no idea how much work goes into an event like what we're, what we're seeing tonight. Computers, circuits, radio transmissions, and more have changed the industry in the past decade. Fireworks have changed tremendously in the years. Um, it has gone from the traditional hand firing and what we called set pieces, which were the American flag, the pinwheels on, on the two by fours. Those were the type of programs that I would go to when I was you know, young. I'd rather see you guys do it tonight and not come back tomorrow, right? The way we normally do it. Pat Bofanlino is charged with making the creative vision a logistical reality. We can punctuate uh, our, our fireworks to the music exactly as, as we would expect them to be. Not only can we uh, call out exactly what time we want that firework to leave the, the mortar, we can also program at exactly what time in the sky we want that shell to give its effect. The largest fireworks will be shot from these canisters far away from the main staging area. Every, every tube has a device. Some uh, would give you a different type of color, different type of patterns, like purple, blues. Uh, you know, depending on the song, it could be a heart that's going to be shot up there. Uh, so there's different types of uh, devices out there. Advances have significantly improved safety within pyrotechnics. Rather than having somebody come over here and have to light this with a torch. <laughs> Is that what they had to do in the past? Well, that's what they would do in the past. They would walk up with a torch, they'd light it, duck, <laughs> and it would go. Now we're firing it from 150 feet away. We're under a, a protected canopy. Developments have allowed Bafanlino to take on new challenges and turn once impossible dreams into modern day realities. Uh, we were able to do the grand opening for the Atlantis on the Palm Jumeirah in Dubai. We actually were able to illuminate the entire Palm Island, the crescents, and illuminate the rooftops of the hotel and the facade of the hotel. We fired that from about 50 different locations. 50 different remote locations fired that program from one central show control. We're gonna move into rehearsal one, protocol one. Just reconfirm that your firepower key switch is off. During the show, Bafon Lino is in contact with Scott Cooper, who maintains a position in the control room near the audience. So we can actually shut down one of these that are out in the field to stop firing a, uh, a specific location or not, or effect. Wow. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, really cool. <laughs> Safety, that's what it's all about. And one of the features that we have uh, built into this type of system is that I know every firing module that's out there. I know every, what we call posts, all these props that you see out in the field. If, if I should see something that does not look right to me, that could be putting somebody in danger or property in, da in you know, damage the property or the wind shifts, we have uh, protocols that we can follow. I can shut down individual firing modules. And all of this leads to the moment we've been waiting for. As the sun goes down, the night ends with a big bang. Six, five, four, three, two, one. The display has nine pyrotechnicians working on site. It includes 2,450 different firing cues and uses a total of 7,400 pounds of fireworks explosives shooting for 26 minutes straight. 